Um, so I think this has to be addressed first and foremost. Zach Wilson has been the talk around the NFL buzz lately. He was sat last week. You know, he's a number two overall pick. There's a lot building up around the situation that us as fans don't really get the behind the scenes look at. But I think that we at least have to talk about what's happening, why it's happening, and what comes after this. And I'm going to kick it off by saying me and Dobbs were Zach Wilson fans at first. And I think it is so lazy when I see people on Twitter and TikTok say, Zach Wilson sucks. He's the worst. He was never going to be good and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, it's easy to say that now. But how many people were saying that before the draft? And I know, Tyler, you were not. uh, You were, quote unquote, a Zach Wilson hater. So I'm going to give you a second to talk about that at first. But I think it's I think it's lazy for you for people to go out and say, like, he's the worst. He sucks um, with with really no idea what's going on behind the scenes, because all we know is what we see on Sunday. We don't know what's happening Monday through Saturday, what's going on behind the scenes, what kind of person he is. All we know is what we saw at BYU, what we saw at the Combine, what we saw in the interviews at the draft and leading up to now. And I don't think that you and me were essentially wrong in the fact saying that Zach Wilson, we thought he was going to be a good quarterback because in a different situation, different scenario, things could be different. But Tyler, I just want to give you a second to talk about your talk. Um, Yeah, I've never, ever been a fan of his, actually. Um, Not coming from like, him as a person or anything, but I just never thought he was a great player. And I've been saying this on the show. You guys know I'm always going to take the big time guys that go to big time schools over others. And at BYU, he didn't really like show me anything crazy. The schedule they played wasn't great. That's not a knock on him. He's got to play who's in front of him just like anyone else has to. But like the big one that everyone talked about when he was at BYU was that Coastal Carolina game because Coastal Carolina was the talk of the town that year. They were hot. They were ready to go. They came in. I think there was like some scheduling stuff too. So it was like they wanted to play them. They he they got the smoke they wanted, and you know he kind of just fell out. Didn't have a great game, and I just I don't know. I, he never struck anything to me as like okay, yeah, this guy's got it. Um, and I also talked about his maturity thing um, when we recorded last. I put it out. We put it out. That interview just speaks volumes to his maturity. How are you going to sit up there? And look in the camera's face and be like, no, I did nothing wrong. That is just stupid. That is just blasphemous to your teammates. That is maybe one of the worst looks I've ever seen. Look at Josh Allen after they lost uh, to, yeah, to the Jets, I think. He said it's hard to win games when your quarterback plays like shit. Mm-hmm. Dak has had the same thing. There's been there's so many guys. It always falls on you, first and foremost, as a quarterback. Always will be no, ma- no matter what. You get you get the hardest work to do. Yeah, you're the quarterback. You just play every play. That, I think, was had a huge part in the benching because that just rubbed all of his teammates wrong. And, you know, there was guys liking tweets here and there and all that stuff. I don't know what they do next because they didn't even dress him on Sunday against the Bears. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of alarming. Why, didn't, why don't you just have him as a backup? It was also like, I know Dylan said this, not here, but he said that there would have been a great game for a, a boost, a confidence booster. They just didn't want to play him playing one of the worst secondaries in the league and i don't know i i think it's definitely scary for him because what do they do i'm not sure if they get rid of him i don't think they have the balls to i think i think that's what i'm going to ask hunter after this i was going to say what do you think happens next with zach wilson so i just kind of want to point this out and like this you pointed this out um earlier this year and i think a lot of people aren't talking about it and it goes to tower's point he was playing at BYU, which is a smaller school. I really think he needed that second year to really get to that level where he is competing. And I almost think it's like he was playing horrendous this year. Don't get me wrong. But it's almost like the Jets got too good too quick. Like, I feel like they were ready to maybe take off next year. And they just so happen they have good coaching. They have good players. They have good talent around them. So everyone else is ready to go. And he still needs that year of development. Here's the thing that team is never going to want to play with him again. And I don't think it has to do with his character. I think it has to do with the fact of they're not red. They don't want to develop. They Mm -hmm. want to win and they're not getting that done with him. So I honestly think they try to trade him and see what happens. But 
I just, there's just no room for him in New York. There's really not. And I think the issue really is he needed that extra year and the Jets are ready to win now and he's not. Yeah. Dubs, I want you to talk about the development part because so, I feel like you're really big on that. Well, that's, so, yeah, I, and I was going to say, real, so I'm going to go, I'm going to kind of like regress here, like start with the the end and then we'll go back to the beginning. Cause we can't, but you'll, you'll see what I mean. So towards the end though, like in a weird way, you guys agree with this. It almost kind of feels like, to Hunter's point, like how Zach Wilson I don't think is going to be back on the Jets. In a weird way, because you like the Jets, they, they developed faster than we thought too. The hot Jets really did become hot fast. Here's here's my thing. It, in a weird way, it feels like Mike White, it's almost like his last start. There was like this weird little time pause where it was like, yeah, well, that's not, it's like Zach Wilson was their guy. And it's like, we thought he was the guy too, but it just didn't feel like that. Like Mike White not being there, you're kind of like, oh, like the Jets are just like, this isn't them at their best. And Mike White comes right back and we expected a good performance, but that was a dot show. I mean, he's literally making every hot read, everything and, and the throws are on the money. And so it's not even close right now that Mike White is their guy. And that's alarming to an extent where they didn't expect much out of Mike White. And like, it looks like it's his job. And so, but then to regress here, the thing about Zach Wilson that I think is weird, and I'm going to use Tua kind of as my like, I'm going to tie it together with Tua here. Brian Flores and Tua just didn't work. And Brian Flores had us genuinely convinced Tua sucked. We did, and I, like, like literally like we, I was, I was very often like half on the train. You've been on the train. So like mm-hmm. credit to you on that. Where it's like, I didn't stay the course on Tua because and the thing is, it's like, I think different situations, different environments mean a lot. But also, I do think to an extent, I heavily overvalued certain characteristics. That's the thing is this this is going to really affect the way I evaluate quarterbacks going forward because I overvalued things that don't happen a lot in game. I overvalued how good he was at breaking things once the pocket broke down and how good he was at being able to last for a while. And the, but that's the thing is a lot of the things where you're back to the BYU thing. He had a lot of time because the competition wasn't that good. So when you have a lot of time to make a play, five, six seconds on each pass play, and you can, of everything, you can get complete center on the field every time. That's It's going to look good, and it did. And he had a lot of good weapons where it's kind of like, that's what's tough is it, the transition just didn't happen the way I thought because I was overvaluing stuff that didn't matter. I wasn't valuing footwork, consistent accuracy, the things that really matter, pocket presence, his height. I hate to say it, height is just becoming more and more valuable the more I evaluate quarterbacks. Really, I mean, and, and good scouts have always been preaching that. So it's like, I think that's the thing too, is though I definitely did overvalue with a lot of you know people too. I think certain traits that just don't appear as much in NFL games. Yeah. So you brought up a good point with the Tua Flores thing. Obviously, that did not work. The situation there was not beneficial for Tua. And we always talk about quarterback development, especially the young quarterbacks. It's Zach Wilson probably still hasn't played 17 games yet in his career, and it's not working on the Jets. I think that's very clear. Um, so we talk about environment. We talk about players being successful and where they are. Do you think that Zach Wilson in a different environment with a different head coach that maybe can 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 tap into the Zach Wilson that we saw in college a little bit? Because right now it doesn't look like a his head's in the spot that he needs to be to be an NFL quarterback and b that the play on the field is up to par with everybody else in the league right now, even a freaking backup that's playing better than him right now. So considering these two things aren't working for him and there was a move to another team, can he have success somewhere else? I I just want to say, like, to the coaching thing, yeah, Flores two weren't working. But I don't – I mean, Salah's that guy, I feel like. I feel like – I think so, too. You know, but obviously, yeah, he's a defense-minded coach, and but he's been around the league for so long, and I feel like he wasn't that, like – like go away, like no. I feel like Sal. He gets his guys going. I feel like you can ask anyone that played for him. They say they love him. Mm-hmm. You can just see it on television every Sunday. This guy's fired up. You know, running at players, excited. So I don't know, but to now your other question of where do you think he goes? You got to get him with a guru. You got to get him with a Shanahan. You got to get him with a, like an Andy Reid type. Mm-hmm. You got to get him. I mean, Doug Peterson would probably do wonders with him. You got to get him to an offensive minded guy to. Maybe tap into something. I get that. I go ahead. Also, wait. But I mean, and you can't say like weapons. I think it's all in his brain. Mm -hmm. The weapons are there. I mean, I would kill for Gary Wilson and Elijah Moore and all those other guys. I would kill for them. Yeah, I really would. So it's like it's coming down to you, and you are the one that's shitting the bed. So I, I don't know. That's I think that's under talked about too. Is like they're in a great situation. And on top of that, I do think he can have success. But in reality, where does he go? That's true. Where does he go? Could 
I, you know, this would be, I don't think it fits the timeline, but if we're going back one year, the Lions might have been a great spot for them. They have all the weapons. They're a developing team. They're not going to be good next till next year. They have high draft picks. They can fill that defense. It lines up with the timeline, but I feel like he has to have been in that system. I don't feel like he's going to pick up a new system in one year. Mm. Like I feel like they have to take time. And I look at all these teams, and it's like, where where does he go? Like realistically, out of all the teams, where does he go? Well, I think that's a very good point because when you look around the league, there are there are teams there that have their guy, and there are teams that don't have their guy. But even the ones that are QB less, that quarterback head coach connection is so freaking important. Mm -hmm. And I don't know which head coach right now would A, be able to turn him around with his mind. I thought about that. I was literally going to say I wouldn't like, I would welcome him with open arms at the situation. You'd have to get the coach right though. You have to be a nuke. Him and Dennis Allen, there's a 0% chance of that developing into something. (laughs) I mean, I'm just being completely honest. There's a 0% chance of that developing into like a Hall of Fame caliber duo. But it's like, no, and, and so because I just wanted to comment because I think you guys both really made good points. Number one, though, because this is I don't want it to be misinterpreted. I think Salah is that guy. I think he's a great coach. It's not it's not about like to not, not to Flores him like he's not getting along with him. It's more like it's just maybe his scheme and his his vision for Zach Wilson is kind of it goes back to what I said a few weeks ago. I think when a QB, the vision separates is when your development of the team is different from how their development mm-hmm. is. And that's literally exactly how Zach Wilson is right now. He's just not. And that's and to your point, you were saying. I don't around Mike White. They're vibing. They're gelling. They look like they're excited. They're hyping him up. There was that never was there with Zach Wilson. It there was never that like carrying him to the like the, what, like the, every touchdown was like there's a lineman there to like it's not like that with Zach Wilson. It's not like it's like Wentz and Heineke. That's exactly it's what it is. It's literally exactly like that. Where and that so it just doesn't feel right. It's not right. That's why he's not confident. I, I'm sure I, it all aligns. I think that's exactly to your point. Like we don't see everything. We don't hear everything. He's not confident because the team clearly isn't confident in him. Understandably, they see Mike White going crazy. <laughs> Throwing this like practice, and that's why he's getting his opportunity running with it. Shout out to Mike White more than anything. I mean, that's the moral of the story, too. Is look, man, if you're not doing your job, someone else is going to come do it for you. In this case, Mike White's that guy. But that's the point, though, is and like there is probably a job for him somewhere, a job that he fits more. I just don't, I don't know where it is either right now because it's odd. The Saints are was one of the teams I was thinking, though, for being that, honest. That also raised the question like that they started Mike White because Joe Flacco came in and did a pretty good job. All out, kind but of. yeah, he kind of fucking went crazy. Mm-hmm. But that also raises a question like, yeah, Flacco's older, but maybe are they trying to see if they got something with Mike White for, you know, something on the field? Obviously, I think they I'm not, do think they have I'm, something. I'm, obviously, I'm not saying that it is, but like, why wouldn't you go with the veteran in this situation when your team is six and three at the point? Mm-hmm. He's been, he's won a Super Bowl. Like, he, you saw him do well with the same team beginning of the season. Like, I thought that was weird personally. Like, what what's the difference between Flacco and him? Not saying fi- or Mike White's the guy, but it's like you have a vet. You, uh, I, I didn't understand it, but I think, obviously it worked out. I think the decision making here is super interesting because I think you guys all had some really good points. And to to your guys' points, Tyler, you were saying Salah's a defensive guy, and Hunter was saying, well, they don't really want to develop a quarterback when the roster looks like this. And I'm pretty damn sure that Salah just wants to win football games. That's why they brought him to New York, and if Zach Wilson's not doing it and they can't wait around for him to develop, that marriage just is not going to work. And honestly, it kind of makes a lot of sense with Miami and Flores. Like that team went on a seven game win streak. They were in the playoffs the year before they got Tua now. And like, you could tell that Brian Flores wasn't waiting for Tua to catch up. Like Tua needed some time to develop to at least know that he belonged and had a coach believe with him, believe in him. I saw, a clip about how Mike McDaniel came in to Miami. Tua did not know that if he belonged in the NFL, Mike McDaniel brought up 700 clips of Tua's play and said, this is why you belong. This is what you're good at. And this is what I'm going to make you even better at. And that connection that you have with your head coach and your quarterback is extremely valuable. So if you don't have that at all with the young guy, how do you expect him to succeed? Even if it's, even if Zach Wilson's not doing it like he should be, like, I don't know. You you can't throw the kid into a game like that and with NFL talent and expect him to be good if if the relationship isn't working. Like yeah. if it's not symbiotic, I, then it's not going to work. Yeah, I mean, head coach quarterback is basically like marriage, boyfriend girlfriend type stuff. Like you have to be this connected because I 
I bet you Josh Allen and John McDermott talk every single day. Yep. Almost at every hour. Mm-hmm. Hey, what's going on? What's this? What's that? What's that? You know, like Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes. I bet you they talk every damn day. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like you got to have that connection. Like, it has to be together mm-hmm. and right. If not, then, yeah, it's going to, you know, fly off the wheels. And I even think, like, Iberflus and Fields, I think they have that. Just because of, like, Iberflus as a person, just, like, motivate, motivate. Like, he's not the offense guru that – you know, a lot of these NFL coaches are, but at least that connection is being like worked on and it's important. I don't know if Salah has prioritized that or not, but it's just the thing is like, if, if Zach Wilson didn't have that, how can you su- expect him to succeed? And that's why I got really angry when people are saying he sucks. It's over number 12 over pick bust. Yeah, that might be true, but it's so easy to say that now when nothing's worked, he's got, he's 20, what three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's got seven more years, seven more years, and then he may be the median age of an NFL quarterback. And we saw Geno Smith pop off at 35. I, I don't want to bring up the Bears too much in this conversation. 30, yeah, right. <laughs> same, I, same thing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to, but I'm going to. I know this might strike a nerve for you because it's like going back to Trubisky Nagy. There was a report earlier this offseason that Nagy didn't even show up to their show up to Mitch's um, offseason meeting. I saw that, yeah. Like before. Like when the when the season's over, he, every coach has an off season meeting with every player. Mm-hmm. Talk about this, talk about that, whatever. Nagy straight up didn't show up to Mitch's. Damn. There's there's Stop. this there's this con- like you know you if you want to have that those connections, where is it? Like wait, wait either, where did this happen? And like the- this was after 2018, I think. Yeah. 20, so after a Nate in the playoff birth or something like that. That's just toxic. Mm. It was like a Nate or whatever, but it's like still like. Those are there's I'm sure there's a lot of that out there right now that you don't mm-hmm. see behind closed doors because you know I'm sure a head coach thinks different than his QB if they're not playing well. It's I feel like it's a lot of ego and like I think my thing is kind of when you brought up the Bears, the personalities of Iberflus and Fields mesh so much better than Sala and Wilson. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. Fields and Iberflus are both like if it's not a win, it's not a win. We have to get better. Whereas like I feel like that's more Sala and like Wilson, I feel like just coming from his situation and where he was at being successful in college. And, you know, he, I'm not going the Booger McFarlane route of like the not accountability. Well, yeah. I just think <laughs> I he is just more like you have to motivate him differently than, than Salah's probably motivation style. hundred percent. But then that comes into like 90% of what coaches at any level preach. Are you coachable? Yeah. That's basically what, it, what football is. He's I've, probably I've, been I've the guy that, his whole life. I've heard yeah. that. I've heard that's, Fucking saying so many times, are you coachable? If you're coachable, you'll play. That's just what it comes down to at that. Yep. And like to that point, as fans, like we don't know that. We don't know if he's coachable or not. No. All we saw was he made a ch- shit ton of plays. He threw the ball really far and accurately. So, yeah, I'm going to think this guy's probably pretty good. And at the time, second overall pick was warranted. But I think we had this conversation, Teller, when the draft was happening. We were saying that we'd probably take Fields over Lawrence at a certain always, point. Yeah. Yeah, like, always. The Fields talk to me definitely makes that conversation a little bit different. But also, we, we were watching the game last night. We have to bring this up. Jordan Love looked pretty good. Yeah. Wait, wait. Before, we, before we go to teasing. that. Okay, wait, wait, before we go to that, I just want to look at the camera. <laughs> Zach Wilson, you are a Houston Texan. 